Hi there, my name is Aaron Lancherman. I'm a professor of electrical engineering at Georgia Tech. So, so far we've been looking at a lot of Fourier transforms. We've looked at Fourier transforms of boxcars and sync functions, and we've looked at Fourier transforms of delta functions and sinusoids. Today we're going to look at something a little more general and talk about taking the Fourier transform of a function of x of t, which is periodic, with period t naught. Here in the 2022nd lecture of the summer 2020 offering of ECE 3084 signals and systems. So we've already looked at frequency domain representations of periodic signals and discovered that we could write these as a Fourier series. So here I'm going to write this as a set of Fourier series coefficients ak times e to the j omega naught kt. And the omega naught here could be written as 2 pi over t naught. So we've already found out that e to the j omega naught t, where this omega naught is a generic omega naught, not necessarily the omega naught that's up here. So let me put a tilde over it. Fourier transforms into 2 pi delta omega minus omega naught. And here I put a tilde on it to make sure I don't get it mixed up with this up here. All right, so if I match this e to the j omega naught with a tilde here t up with this e to the j omega naught up here, I can then use linearity to easily find out what the Fourier transform is. So if I have a periodic waveform that I've already represented in terms of a Fourier series, meaning I've basically already found these Fourier series coefficients ak, I can write the Fourier transform on the other side here as basically just multiplying all of the Fourier series coefficients by this 2 pi and writing these delta functions. So the Fourier transform of a periodic signal has the form of a bunch of delta functions that are at integer multiples of the fundamental frequency. Here we're writing it in radians per second, but if needed, you can plug in 2 pi over t naught for omega naught if that's more convenient. So let's do an example. If we go to our YouTubes and look back at lecture 13, we computed the Fourier series coefficients of a square wave that went between 0 and 1 that was centered around the origin. We use this as an example in lecture 14, and during lecture 14, I said this. A bit of a spoiler alert warning is that later when we talk about Fourier transform theory, we'll make plots like this, but they will all have a 2 pi multiplying everything, and we'll talk about why that shows up. And now you see why I said that, because there's this 2 pi sitting here in front of the AK. So having these YouTube clips inside of YouTube clips, it's like YouTubeception. I'm, I'm tempted to put a big, giant Hans Zimmer score behind it. Let me clean this up a little bit. So what makes this immensely confusing is back in EC 2026, we had you draw spectra. We had you draw the spectrum of a particular signal, and we did cover Fourier series... And we said that these were the Fourier series coefficients of this kind of function. And then we had you draw plots like this. Now, back in 2026, we had you put these little arrowheads at the end of these spectral lines, although we didn't really tell you about Dirac delta functions. We didn't tell you where this came from. To make this work in our current EC3084 Fourier transform framework, we have those two pi's, so I need to multiply this by two pi, and this by two pi, and this by two pi, and so on. So I could get some canceling going on here. Yeah, maybe you could cancel here and wind up writing this as pi. These pi's would cancel and you'd write this as two. Let's see, what do we get here? We'll get minus two thirds, and so on. Everything's symmetric here. So you could do the same thing to the stuff on the left-hand side, but I'm not going to bother to write it in here. The thing is, sometimes this actually obscures what's going on, so it's just as common to not try to simplify the weights on the delta functions and just write things as a naught times 2 pi, a 1 times 2 pi, I guess you're, here you would have a 3 times 2 pi, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, just because it kind of makes it clear what's going on here. Now, your mileage may vary, and you may ask, why are we going through all of these details? Well, now we can mix our Fourier transform things with these periodic functions. So suppose I call this x s q of t to indicate that it's a square wave. And I wanted to say, oh, well, what's the Fourier transform of x t 
equal e to the minus 3 tut plus x square wave of t. Well, I could do that. I could compute the Fourier transform of this from our Fourier transform tables we've had before. And then I could write in the series. I could write the series sum of the Fourier transform of this with those delta functions. And I just have to remember to multiply all of the Fourier series coefficients by 2 pi. And this puts everything here on an equal footing.